As you can see, it's snowing in South Tennessee right now. They're actually calling for five to eight inches in this storm. I'm from New Hampshire, so I guess I'll believe it when I see it. But when I moved to South Tennessee, I did bring my snowboard. Bought a sled for Kayla, got my snowboard out, and we have a long hill right here in front of the shop. But before we get into today's episode, I wanna let you guys know that we're doing a limited run of the vintage shop shirts right now. As this video is going live, I have only 30 of these shirts live on LodusGarage.com right now. The link is in the video's description below. Last time they went in like 20 minutes. So we're doing a bunch of these like small batch, different colorways as we go through the winter. And this one is a cream with a royal blue print in the vintage heritage shop shirts, just like my father's old shirts that he did in the 1970s and 80s with his shop, Ludwig's Service Center. But if you're watching this, go to LudwigsGarage.com. If those shirts are sold out, we still have some of the 924S champion hoodies, t-shirts, some shop banners, and a few other things. But head to the web store and pick something up regardless. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Let's get into the episode. What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are still deep in on the 64 Volkswagen Beetle build, the giveaway 64 Beetle. In the last episode, you saw us pull the motor. Corey rebuilt the motor. Got a few more things to do to that before that goes in. We're waiting on parts. I realized we're just getting right into this. Coming at you guys with energy. Uh, cause we need it cause it's freezing down here in the shop. But we got the motor out. Uh, throw up bearing looks good. Clutch looks good. Axle boots look good. Transmission mounts do not look good. So we ordered those, we're waiting on those. So the motor is lying in wait until we can get transmission mounts because uh, those need to be out since as you can see, the bolts are inside the bell housing or uh, inside the case of the transmission. So the motor is basically good. We just got to do a remain seal on that, transmission mounts and that's going back in. But the Everesto bits are here and that's what we're starting to do today is suspension work. The boys at Everesto, if you didn't see the last episode or any of the episodes leading up to this point, we're working with my good friend Max and Jesse from Everesto on all the suspension stuff. And it all came in in the last episode. We've got a six inch narrowed beam. We've got a skid plate. We've got shortened steering assemblies. We've got a steering stop. We have drop spindles. We have drop plates. We have bushings. We got some shirts, stickers. The boys hooked us up. So this car is getting the Everesto treatment. And if you guys are interested in slamming your Volkswagen air-cooled car, hit Everesto up. They're in England, but they ship to the U.S. all the time. And I stated in the last episode, all of this stuff in that box, UPS was under $200 shipping from England to here in two days. Two-day shipping. Don't fear the uh, currency exchange or the fact that they're in England. Get some Everesto bits in your car. I can't wait to fit this stuff. So today we're gonna to work on tearing the car apart. We already have the fuel tank out because we needed to drain it because we got a bunch of sediment in it. So we drained the fuel tank and got it out. We're waiting, yeah. <laughs> Fluid film sent us a whole bunch of stuff a few years ago and we're still working through that stock. So that's gotta to go to work on this car as well. Fuel tank's out, waiting on a sending unit, gasket, and a few other things there. Um, but since the fuel tank's out, we have access to the top of the beam and the steering assembly. So that's gonna stay out. This episode's going to be teardown. We're gonna start pulling suspension out of the car, seeing what we need to order, if anything, or if we've got everything that we need here. All right, so we'll get the Beetle up in the air. We're gonna start with just disassembling everything. We'll get the steering assembly out. We'll get the drums off. So once we get drums off, we'll see whether or not we need to do brakes, but we are doing a lot of front end components, obviously, with the suspension conversion. All right, so we have good news on the inside of the front drums. Shoes, wheel cylinders, springs. Adjusters look like they're old, but as long as they're freed up and still work, everything in here looks new. Same story on the driver's side. So that is great news because don't need to do brakes. Shoes have plenty of meat left on them. Wheel cylinders look good.
Nice. How much longer? <laughs> a lot less greasy using vice grips. You get it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we have the front end parts off, sway bars out, control arms are out. And what we've done here is we didn't take the spindles off the knuckles, I guess. I mean, you air cold guys would know the terms of these more. I mean, obviously we've got a spindle here and then where the kingpins are, I would assume would be like a knuckle or another spindle. And then once we've got those out, we've got the leaf stacks out. So this is what they look like here. And you'll see the grub screw holes that are drilled into the stack. Now these are all individual pieces. The middle grub screw goes into the beam and locks these in, in the middle, and then the control arms correspond to the outer ones. We have to cut those stacks down and re-drill the outer ports, essentially, for the shorter beam that's gonna go in the car. So right now, we're ready to take the beam out. Everything's unhooked, except steering. Yeah, we're gonna unhook steering next. Forget about that. Mm -hmm. Leaf stacks are out, shocks are off, control arms are out. All right, so we've got Two bolts up top. These are forward body mounts. So as you can see, the body actually mounts to that as well. And we're taking the whole steering assembly with it. So I think if you drop the RM out of the way, yep, to me. You gotta clear your box a little bit on the front there. Yeah. All right, well, we got the old beam out. We still have the front brakes connected since we didn't really have to disconnect those. We've just got the backing plates with the shoes and all that kind of tucked up. But other than that, everything's out the front. You can see how the front acts as body mounts here. So what we'll do now is we'll clean some stuff up. We'll get the box off and we'll compare everything to the six inch beam and actually I'm pretty excited to get this stripped down and have them both sitting next to each other. And you'll see just how narrow we're going with this. This isn't the most narrow. You know, people have gone eight inch or even more. Six inch beam in these Beetles is kind of like the formula, but they look great with the stock wheels, narrow tire. You can see the difference. The other beam will fit inside the original beam on the shock towers. And also for you guys that were wondering, talking about six inch beams that won't fit shock towers, you can see the step out in the shock tower plates. The factory beams, they go straight up for the upper shock mount. Since this part of the six inch narrowed beam gets sucked in under the wheel well, these shock tower plates step out to essentially mount in the factory location. Like we've got these almost in line with each other. And you can see that the beam is sitting inside the length, stock length beam rather. So the only thing we really have to do before we start bolting this stuff in is get our leaf stack cut down the top and bottom so that's really all we have to do for modifications other than that everything should bolt in all right so we've kept the leaf stack clamped as tight as possible so what we're going to do now is the point of no return where since it's a six inch narrowed beam we're going to cut three inches off of each end so we're going to leave the center grub screw port where it is because that's still going to get located by these grub screws in the center and right now they just stick out too far. So we're gonna cut them down three inches on either side to make it six inches narrower. The center grub screw will still work in that center hole. And then after we cut it down, we'll essentially have to drill a new grub screw port after we cut it. Point of no return, cut one. Can't go back now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back next day working on the leaf stacks. Now, we left you guys off with cutting them down, but we ran into bit strength. Now, these leaf stacks are hardened steel, so naturally you want a really good bit to drill the grub screw dimples into them. And this is the grub screw here. It's conical on the end, and they locate right in the dimple when they come through the beam and essentially lock everything into place. And that goes into the stack that comes in this way 
and it locks in on the end here. And what is crazy is that grub screw holds the control arm and essentially the wheel to the car. Like this is what it all comes down to. You've got your, you've got your tire, your drum, your brakes, your spindle, your kingpin and knuckle, your control arms, all being held on by that grub screw. So naturally, or obviously, this is the most important part. We ran into some bit issues between Corey and I. We both just had, we wore our bits right out. I've got a drill sharpener, uh, a bit sharpener that we were in the process of setting up, but I decided today to just go buy some carbide bits. Now, my father and I did this on the 700 as well, and I can't remember what bit size we used at my father's shop, but he obviously had some good bits in his shop. I ran to get bits and they were out of 7 16 which was about 11 mil. That's what Max at Everesto uses. They use about an 11 millimeter. A half inch is about 12.7 mil. And so that's what we're working with right now. So we did this side already. We got that depth good and we just did this side. So we're gonna call this good. I could have bought these right from Max. So if you're interested in buying everything that we're putting in this beetle. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You don't have to do this. So you can buy these right from Everesto in the beam, ready to go. So all you gotta do is put your control arms on. Now, for those of you guys who are air-cooled guys and you already know, yes, I do know that the factory length control arms for how low we're going are gonna put our front wheel pretty forward in the fender. Some companies make longer control arms, which I might do. We're gonna set this thing down first when we get all this in and see how bad it really is. Uh, we might run the longer arms before the giveaway if it'll really help center that wheel back out. So I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking that at this point because we haven't shown longer control arms yet amidst all the parts we have. All right, so now that we have the leaf stacks cut down, grub screw dimples drilled in and ready to go in the beam. So what we're going to do next is we're going to get the factory rear spring plates out and get the Everesto ones in. So what we're working with back here is this here is your spring plate. Now, a lot of you guys, I'm going to assume, have seen a lot of this or worked on a lot of this before. But for those of you who haven't, here's a quick rundown. The suspension all around, but in the back, is torsion suspension. And inside this bar is a torsion bar. There are splines on the inside and splines on the outside of that torsion bar. That bar basically twists. It walks in up here. And out here, this spring plate has the corresponding splines on the inside of this. And we'll show you guys on the Everesto one. So that slides on and locks into that torsion bar. And that torsion bar gives the car the suspension. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these spring plates off and put the Everesto drop plates on, which swoop up, which give us an immediate drop. But also these will allow us full adjustability. There's a set screw on there that you can raise and lower the car without having to pull that spring plate off your torsion bar. Now, if you just wanted to lower this car with nothing, you can do that for free. You could basically take this off, note where it came off, and re-index a spline and put it back on, and you've immediately dropped the car. That's what we did on Kayla's Porsche 944. We basically did an episode where we showed you how to lower that car for free, essentially. That car still is on the back burner. We're gonna do coilover conversion on that car uh, sooner than later. But that's how you can do it for free. But rather than use this stock plate, which will ultimately bottom out on this casting piece here, the, the lower you go and the higher that spring plate goes, you'll catch on that casting ear. Who did that brake line? after this shock had been put in. We've got three bolts on the axle that hold the back of the spring plate to the axle. And up front, we've got the four bolts off of the spring plate end cap, essentially. So we're gonna pry this off now. There's a bushing inside this, and there's a bushing on the inside of the spring plate in the torsion tube itself. And you can see here, it's sitting on this stop, on this little lip of the cast of the pan itself. So what we want to do is we want to pull this off of that to relieve the pressure. And when we do, you, you don't really want anything underneath this. You don't want your foot or your hand. It is under a lot of pressure. It's not going to go swinging down real hard, but it is going to kick down like an inch or so. So you just want to be careful at this point because it is under pressure. So at this point, we can move the axle away 
and that basically frees up the, the actual spring plate to kick down a little bit. Yeah. So we're free of the axle now. We'll pry this off. So you can see here, that's where the big bushing is on the end of the spring plate. And so what we wanna do now is now we wanna pry that spring plate away from this lip to get it to kick down. And when that happens, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a line from the top of the spring plate and scribe a mark on the frame horn so we know what spline factory location is. So that way when we put our drop plate on, we haven't gone an aggressive tooth one way or the other. It'll all go back on factory. And the drop of the spring plate is the drop we'll ultimately get. We won't re-index a spline at all. We'll put it back in its factory orientation. This might not kick down that much, but if you do this, just, just be safe. Yep, about to go. We might be off. Yeah, we're off. I think you're good. Yeah, we're off. <laughs> that was definitely anticlimactic for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We're off. Yeah. You can see that the spring plate itself is pulling away from the bar because sometimes what'll happen is it'll free up on the inside and you pull the whole bar out with the actual spring plate. So this is the ideal scenario where you're just taking the plate off and we can just slide the new one back on. So before we take this off now, we're gonna scribe a mark from the top of the spring plate and weaving a line on the horn, the frame horn of the pan. That way when we put the Everesto plate back on, we can line them up and get the right teeth from the factory location. All right guys, so this is the difference, the clear difference in a stock straight rear spring plate and the Everesto adjustable drop spring plate. If we don't get the Coney shocks in in time in the next week and a half for Euro Tripper, these ones will do. These aren't quite blown out yet. These still have some good pressure on them. So we'll use those if we have to. All right, well, the Everesto spring plates are in. They put up a little bit of a fight, but once you figure out the formula of what to loosen and what to kind of pry on, they go in okay. So what we've done here is we've just set the adjuster to stock height, essentially. And all this has done is give us this drop in the actual plate. So when we put wheels on and we set it down for the first time, what we'll see is just what the plate gives us for immediate drop. And then we can crank this bolt. We'll, we'll loosen up the set bolt and we'll crank this bolt down to lower the car more and dial in the height. Obviously we're gonna crank that thing all the way out. But what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna bolt the beam in. The leaf stacks are ready to go in, but we are gonna work on some other stuff on the front end. So we're not going to do the leaf stacks yet, but also the steering stabilizer. This is the old one. I forgot that the Everesto steering kit did not come with this. So I've ordered one. We've got a new one on the way, but it's not in yet. So we're not gonna put all the steering assembly together before we get the new one in. That should be in well before we leave for Eurotripper. Should be the end of the week. The other thing we haven't installed yet, and you may have noticed, are the Everesto drop spindles that have the flipped machine taper for the tie rod so we can flip our tie rods upside down to alleviate the geometry of the tie rods when the car is low. So we haven't installed those yet. And the reason why is we have to rebuild the kingpin bushings in the knuckles. And we don't have a reamer for that yet. We've never done this, but we're going to do it ourselves. And we don't have time to do it before Euro Tripper. We need to get a reamer. We need to get a few uh, rebuild kit pieces. And there's a lot of play between the spindle and the kingpin knuckles. It's, it's safe enough to just putt around Fort Myers in, but we wanna rebuild those so the front end is nice and tight and rebuilt ultimately. So luckily, this already has three inch drop spindles in these knuckles, quite literally the same ones that came with the Everesto kit. The only thing that they don't have is the reverse taper for flipping the tie rods. But having the tie rods mount on top with an exhausted geometry might give us a little bit of bump steer, but we're not going to be driving the thing cross country. We're not daily driving it. We're going to drive it for a weekend in Fort Myers around at the car show. So we're going to put up with the old drop spindle, which is great because those are the same ones. It's gonna give us the same height that we're gonna need because what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna take these drop spindles out and really mess up the bushings and the kingpins and then we can't put it back together or if we do, there's even worse play. Is it? Mm. Yeah. 
All right, guys, well, we got the beam in and just mocked up. It's gonna come back out again when we do the spare tire tub here. We're gonna replace that as well. But we wanna just get it in and get it mocked up and just see how good the six inch narrow beam, which would normally do away with your shock towers because it's too narrow to stay within the wheel well. But what Everesto's done is step it out. So your six inch narrow beam sits underneath inside the inner fender wells, but then this plate that becomes the shock tower steps out and stays just inside your wheel well so you can still run a shock and still retain the best ride quality possible with such a narrowed front beam, which normally you have to just sacrifice and get rid of. Well, that's a great stopping point of this episode. We got all the suspension out that we needed out. We know what we need to order, what's still on the way. The motor's ready to go back in. We just need to do that rear main seal. We're waiting on the transmission mounts. So once those are in, we're putting the motor in, we're getting everything set back up. We've got the new fully adjustable Everesto drop plates in, in the rear, new bushings, new hardware, spring plate caps are all back on. The rear is all set to go. So this is one last reminder. Last time they went in under an hour, I only made 30 of the new colorway in the Ludwig's Garage shop shirt. So head to ludwigsgarage.com right now. There's a link in the video's description below. Get them while they last. They may already be gone by the end of this episode. We'll do something like this again, but I've been wanting to get small batches out to you guys in limited colorways. If you guys wanna help support the shop and the channel, and the builds in a larger way. The Patreon link is in the video's description below as well. That's a huge, huge help here in the shop. Love sharing what we got behind the scenes with you guys on the Patreon, but also you get first access to these mini drops. We've already sold a handful of the shirts out of the 30 that I've only made to the Patreon subscribers just last week. So you guys get discount codes, early access, behind the scenes content. And I get your guys' opinion on a lot of this stuff too and see what you guys think about some of these projects before we pull the trigger on them. Well, that's it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hope you guys are as stoked as we are on this project. We're gonna have a lot of info coming soon as to when we're gonna start the giveaway for this car. I wanted it live while we were still building the car, but thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.